The best way to brush your dog is while your dog is laying down. This way you have easily access to all the difficult parts. You can, can brush from the belly to the back, the toes to the shoulder, the inner leg, the breast, the legs behind and the tail. You start with holding the hair up with one hand and brush the hair from under that hand with the automatic brush layer for layer. Exactly positioned under your hand, not there. Thus you can control that the brush don't get too much hair at the same time to brush, which can make the brush falter. There where the coat is matted, you will feel that the brush starts climbing. You will have to hold it there with some force as long as you feel that the brush wants to climb. You may let the brush rest on a dog. The brush won't damage the skin. Then you start with the front leg. You hold the leg up with one hand and with the thumb of that hand you hold the hair up so you can easily brush the hair from under your thumb. Don't keep the brush too long at the toes. Better brush it a few seconds one direction and then a few seconds from another direction. Move your thumb upwards the leg and brush it all the way up to the shoulder. If the leg is very matted, you'd better brush it again after you have reached the shoulder. Before you start using the brush, the battery has to be fully charged with the charger we have included. The battery will be at full strength after being fully used and fully charged again about five times. The back side of the front leg I usually do this way. Then you start with the inner leg. Again, not too long at one spot, but brushing it from different sides. All the way up. To be able to brush the armpit, just move the front leg out of the way. And then you start brushing the breast. As far as you can get. Then you start brushing from the breast to the shoulder, layer for layer. Make sure you see skin between the layers. Make sure you don't make your layers too thick. See how I do it? I keep the brush against my hand a few seconds, so the brush can do it, the brushing, and then I withdraw the brush a little, so you can check if you see skin. If you don't see skin, you have to start brushing at that spot all over again. Then you start with the leg behind, same way as the front leg. When the coat is very matted, I strongly hold the hair with one hand and keep the brush in place. 
despite its wish to climb. You'll have to get used to the brush. The very first time you won't be so handy. Once you know how it works, you never want to brush by hand anymore. When the coat is very matted, you'd best brush your dog a second time after you have finished the first time. And after that, check the coat with a comb. Just like with an ordinary brush, little tangles might be left behind in the coat because they are too small for the brush to remove them completely. Then you start with the inner leg. With a curly fleece or woolen coat, you easily see which parts you have already brushed, because the curls are all gone. With a fleece or hairy coat, however, you don't see it that easy. So you'd best have a system you follow. You start from the belly to as far on the side as you have easily access to, then the front leg, inner front leg, breast, from breast to shoulder, leg behind, inner leg behind, tail and then the rest of the side up to the backbone. For this I always put the dog on her breast like this. You have to adjust the height of your table in such a way that you can easily let the brush rest on your dog. You don't have to lift the brush all the time. Just let it rest. It mustn't feel heavy for you. You can also brush your dog in standing position, but then you have to adjust the height of your table all the time. When you have grown handy with the brush, you may also brush the tail with it. Just firmly hold the tail in one hand and let the brush brush from the side up to the tip of the tail. Never let go of the tail. It might disappear in the vacuum cleaner and your dog won't like that at all, although it will never hurt. After the tail, flip your dog over to the other side and start brushing the same system. From the belly to as far of the side as you have easily access to. Then the front leg, here is the speed two times faster, but you get the, the idea. Remember, don't hold the brush too long at the toes. Then the inner leg. Reason you may not hold the brush too long on toes, knees, hip, etc. is that the brush may not hurt the skin, but it can hurt a knuckle. However, if you hold the brush just a few seconds on protruding parts, like toes, hip, knees, vertebra, there will be no hurting at all.
Then you follow with the breast as far as you have access to. Even if you have to lift the front leg. When you start brushing near an ear, make sure it doesn't disappear in the vacuum cleaner by holding it up with your other hand. Again, it won't hurt, but it might frighten you and your dog a lot. And then the leg behind. The brush is meant to be used regularly on your dog, at least once per three or four weeks. If you do it my way, you will have your dog thoroughly brushed in no time at all. I strongly recommend to wash your dog after the brushing, to close the cuticle and to wash away all the dirt and grease out of the coat. If you don't wash your dog after the brushing, the mats will come back in a very short time. I have spent the last 10 years maintaining the coats of all my Labradoodles with their different coats, so I speak from years of experience. For the last piece of this side, flip your dog on his belly and brush not exactly to the middle, but a little bit beyond. If you have become best friends with your brush, so you know how to work with it, you may also do the ears with the brush. Take the ear firmly in one hand while brushing the hair on the ear layer for layer. On the inside as well. Don't let go, otherwise the ear will disappear in the vacuum cleaner. After that, make your dog stand or sit and brush that part of the breast you weren't able to do before. That's the way you do it.